Hi, I'm Brian Glass at NASA Ames. This is the crux. It is a rotary percussive drill. This means that it not only turns around like you might expect at home, but it also moves up and down a couple of millimeters. And the hammering motion plus the rotation means it's more efficient in breaking its way through ice and through hard materials. We've been testing this at lower power at Mars power levels, uh, 100 watts or so total power to the drill, low weight on bit, concomitant with being in a Mars gravity field, to, to support a prototype we're building for a flight unit that we want to send to Mars in 2016. This has a, a hammer or percussive unit. It has actually space rated motors, although we don't actually need space rated for this application. And this is our favorite test site because we have this breccia, this matrix of glassy material with different pieces of rock, different sizes, and ice lenses, and larger chunks. And this is probably the closest terrestrial analog to lunar regolith or Mars regolith as far as the broken textures and having the ice layers inside. So this is going to help us design and come up with a reliable, robust drill that we can take to Mars on a Phoenix-like platform in 2016 or 2018. If you look at the two lasers down here, these are laser vibrometers. Uh, Shannon Statham from Georgia Tech is operating these. These bounce light off the drill and from the speckle pattern and tiny shifts, Doppler shifts in the speckle pattern, can see small motions and vibrations and wiggles, frequency shifts as well, in how this is moving as a flexible structure. And from that, without touching the drill itself, we can deduce what's going on down in the hole. If it's jamming, if it's clogging, if something has fallen into the hole against it. We can tell all of that just from tiny changes in the vibration patterns and frequencies at the top. And that then goes to another diagnostic system that can runs recovery procedures that can automatically back it out, speed it up, add weight, reduce weight, or just, if all else fails, bring it up to the surface and cry for help or say, what next, back to mission control. So that's the automation side that we need to be able to do because Mars is 10, 12 minutes away from Earth, so you can't possibly teleoperate it the way you could on the moon when you only have a few seconds. This can easily get stuck in terms of seconds, so it has to be completely automated to send it to Mars or Europa or any place further out. Uh, hello, I'm Mateusz Czesiak from Honey Bee Robotics. I'm here supporting uh, the drill team, uh, the company I work for design and build the, the crux drill that we're using here uh, this field season. My work ultimately usually comes down to actually <laughs> taking the big pipe wrench and unjamming the, the drill strings if there is a problem. Uh, uh, we're testing different drill strings right here. We have a uh, 1.5 inch OD drill string that we've been using so far on the crux. And right now the one mounted on the drill itself is a 1 inch OD drill string. Uh, this one is made out of aluminum. The ones that we tested uh, earlier a uh, few days ago are made of stainless steel. So we're trying to uh, basically test different drill strings, different material, different geometries and come up with, uh, with the best solution for the, for the problem. Hi, my name is Shannon Statham. I'm a PhD candidate at Georgia Tech and I'm here supporting the Crux Drill team. Uh, just a little bit about what I'm doing here. I have my laser Doppler vibrometers. Uh, they are sensor devices that use laser beams essentially to um, measure the vibrations of a moving object, in our case our uh, moving drill strings, and they transfer all their information to my nice SIGLAB data acquisition device, which I then can um, look at and analyze the vibrations of the drill uh, as it's operating. And then from those, I can tell whether or not we're in a nominal drilling mode or if by chance we're in a fault mode. If we're in a fault mode, what type of fault mode? And from there, we send the diagnostics over to the executive to be analyzed and dealt with. Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson from NASA Ames. Uh, my responsibility on this project is the drill automation software and also the design and implementation of this thing, um, which is somewhat encrusted in uh, mud, but this is the downhole imager instrument 
which basically attaches to the bottom of the drill string and makes it possible to take photographs of the inside of the borehole through this camera lens here. Wow! Tell us how you made that and where you made it. Okay, so um, this was a, a fairly typical kind of um, wouldn't it be really really cool if kind of things but we didn't actually really have any budget to do it so it's a case of well okay we don't have any money but we want to do it and nobody's going to give us any money unless we can show that it works so um, I designed it in a three-dimensional three CAD package and um, the housing was printed on a 3D printer so this is actually ABS plastic, same thing that children's toys are made from, or telephones, or the case on most people's mobile phones and so on. And um, this was literally printed in 3D, and uh, inside it there are some electronics that I designed in this part at the top, and the camera here, um, and it attaches to uh, a bed at the bottom, and this cable at the top connects up to the wiring through the drill string, and through a slip ring at the top and then to the computer system that, that captures the images. And a couple of days ago we got the first really good downhole images which hopefully are going to go forward to uh, for real publication fairly soon. Great, thank you. You're brilliant. We love you.